gosh, the, the problem is, yeah, centered subjects, which you and I like, but you can't see it. So at least folks can see what the background image is today. I had somebody whom I really respect. I won't name Brooks's name. I mean, I won't name his name. And I remember he did one of one of his, I think it was a podcast, enough with the centered images. You know, I'm just so, so drawn to a symmetrical centered image. And uh, is it one of the rules? Uh, my mentor told me I shouldn't center the subject. Is it a common wisdom? Yes, but I just love it. So it's a, I sacrifice likes probably because I just love centered. But for me, there's a completely, there, there's two things here in, in, is what I have learned. There's something called a centered image, which this is. And then there's something called a bullseye image. What's that? There's two totally different things. That's where you might have, let's say you're taking a picture of a car okay. on the beach. Okay. And that car is dead center if you put a crosshair on wow. that frame and that car is in the very middle of that crosshair that's a dead centered image and quite candidly in that case it's probably pretty static but there's a big difference between that and let's take the same scene we've got a ocean scene and we've got a beautiful lone tree and we put that lone tree right in the middle. To me, that is not a centered image. Mm. It, it, well, I guess it is. It's centered, but it's not a bullseye image in any way, shape, or form. Why? Because it's got a base to the tree. And that base is in the bottom. It just happens to be in the bottom middle of the frame and cutting the frame in half as it goes up through the frame. So what? What I dislike about any rule or common wisdom is that it stops one from exploring or pursuing their vision because people think, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. Oh, I hate that phrase. I didn't think I was supposed to do that. You're supposed to do anything that feels right to you. Yes. And you might later look at that image and come back at it and say, geez, I wished I wouldn't have put that stone cross in the middle. I wished I would have done something different. And that's called learning. But you don't learn from other people's rules and common wisdoms. You learn through your own vision, your own likes, your own dislikes. But uh, Nicole, it, it, I agree 100% because we've had those conversations. But I would ask the viewer, why would this image, specific image of mine, look better off to the right or off to the left? It, well, well, I would argue that it would look terrible off to the left and off to the right. It and would, one would hope they would not tell you that. One would hope. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I was told by my mentor not to put the angel Gabriel in the center. I was told by another person in, at a boulder opening not to put my water on the horizon. <laughs> and, you know, I never think about those things. I just compose to my eye. And that's how it is. Later, yeah. somebody can say to me, I, I've had people do this so many times. You follow the rule of thirds. Look at on that image. Yeah. And I tell I was completely unaware. I truthfully do not know what the rule of thirds is. I know it involves these grid lines, but I don't know what it is. So I never consciously follow a rule. I just compose to the eye. And then somebody later says, oh, you followed that rule. Yeah. No, I was unaware. Yeah, the I, rules are limiting. Rules are dumb. And some people are going to respond and say some rules are, you know, and the, hey, let me tell you the one I hate the most. You can't break the rules until you know them. Yes, I can. <laughs> I do it all the time. Uh, rules are worthless. And now some people want to call them guidelines. I don't even like that. Learn to see for yourself. Learn to feel what's right for your vision and pursue it. Period. Yeah. Okay. We we beat this one to death, but we thought we'd do it in a slightly <laughs> different. We way. didn't even plan on doing it. <laughs> just just in case you didn't get it the first three <laughs> times we've talked about it. I get so worked up over this one. Yeah, because it's it's so limiting. People, free yourself. Get rid of the shackles. See for yourself.
Wow, I feel like I'm at church now. Wow. Preach, brother, preach. Well, you got the cross behind you. There so you go. How do, how do you really feel about rules, Cole? <laughs> they're worthless. <laughs> they're, they're, okay, they're worse that, than worthless. They're harmful. I, I've been, we've talked about that as yeah. well. They are harmful because they get in the way of seeing. When people respond to your images and they say, <laughs> look, you cut the horizon in half. And your next comment should be, well, how do you feel? I know what they're going to say. It feels terrible because they're all thinking about the stinking rule that was broken rather than how they feel about the image. That's why we love the whole felt method thing. That's why that last show that we did a few shows ago about how did you feel about the black and white images? Not was it centered? Not did you cut the frame in half? No. How did you feel? And I know somebody out there is going to say, well, I felt very static because you put the horizon in the middle. <laughs> Well, that woman at this Boulder opening, after she told me two rules, my images had broken. Here's what I'm thinking as I'm looking at her. I didn't say it to her. I said, you can't see my images. Yeah. All you can see are rules followed and rules not followed. Yeah. And what a terrible way to be a photographer. What um, a terrible way to look at art. Yes, yes, yes. Terrible way to look at art. I That's wonder so if photographers who are into these rules look at the classic paintings and judge those paintings by the rule of thirds and centered and horizons. And I would, wouldn't think so. I wouldn't Maybe think somebody so. who's versed in paintings who are really into paintings, they can answer that question. Or if you're a painter, yeah. <clears throat> are we there rules the rule of thirds? We might be surprised that they might have the same club we do, I guess. Maybe they do. I don't know. Well, uh, I, I told the story once. My friend who's a painter, a fairly well-known painter, and I was doing my annual uh, a private conversation between Pablo Picasso and I forget who the other one was and how they were right. all comparing Rembrandt, I don't know, comparing their tools and their satchel and their paints and their stools and their easels. And, and then they stopped and said, this is terrible. We really ought to be focused on the image. Do you think photographers do this? And the other guy goes, no, probably not for them. It's all about the image. And of course, it was tongue in cheek. And he said, you know, you're exactly right, though. Painters do that. They compare what brushes, what easels, what canvases they use. Wow. And I never knew that. I thought they would be more about the art. And we were the technical ones. So, yeah. So it happens there, too. But, yeah. Okay. Well, we beat this dead horse to death, but I, it's fun to do it. <laughs>